beautiful souls. It's Julie Jancis here. I've been getting a lot of questions about the services that I offer. So I just want to run through this real quick. I offer one-on-one -on -one readings by phone, Skype, and in person in Wheaton and Naperville, Illinois. I also offer Reiki training and my own angel school where you can learn how to communicate with your angels. You can learn about all of this on my website at www.jancis.com. That's J-A-N-C-I-U-S dot com. You're listening to Angels and Awakening, where we believe daily life can be lived from a constant state of love, joy, peace, bliss, ease, and grace. Why are people always searching for a better way to live? Because there is one. Life doesn't have to be stress-filled and anxiety-ridden. You can make lasting changes that lead to a life you love. My name's Julie Jancis. I have the gift of connecting with angels and bringing through their healing, positive messages to my clients every day. Join us on the Angels and Awakening podcast each week as we explore big spiritual questions, interview experts, and bring through angel messages. I'm so excited you're here. Hello, everyone. We are here with Devin. She's a listener of the podcast, and she has an angel story to share with us today. Hello, Devin. Hi. <laughs> so you have an angel story to share with us. I was wondering if you can share more of that. Yeah, yeah, I can. Ooh, sorry, I'm kind of nervous. Oh, don't be nervous. It's okay. <laughs> okay, so uh, where to start? So I want to start. So I lost my boyfriend of about eight years um, in the end of June, this past June. Um, he was sick for, he was sick for six years on and off. He had bone cancer. Um, it's called Ewing sarcoma. It's really rare. And the first time he had it, it was like the best case scenario for something like that. And his doctors were like, wow, you're such a lucky kid. And six years later, here we are not feeling so lucky. Um, but when, and his name is Devin too. So if I'm telling the story and it gets confusing, it's because we have the same name. <laughs> um, so my Devin went on the day that he passed, we were all with him in the room. This, this is a little bit different from what I told you in the email because I feel like you need to know this first. Um, but we, it was me, his mom, his uh, younger brother and his grandpa, the four closest people to Devin um, in his life. And we were all in the room with him and I was, I was laying in bed with him, and his mom was next to the bed holding um, oxygen to him. And his brother was kind of standing by the middle of the bed, and his grandpa was standing by the foot of the bed. And his, um, well, Devin, at, you know, toward the end, he, uh, he, his voice didn't sound the same. He had tumors all in his mouth, and he really couldn't, he, for, you know, days, weeks before, his voice was just different. It was groggly and didn't sound like my Devin. And then that day and the day before, he wasn't speaking at all. Um, so we were all sitting there and talking to him and, you know, kissing him and telling him it's going to be okay. And at this point, I didn't know if I believed in a heaven. So his mom was telling him, we're going to see you in heaven. It's going to be okay. And she told me to tell him that. And I couldn't tell him that because, I didn't want to lie to him, and I didn't know if that was true. So I just asked him wherever he was going to wait for me. And his his breathing started to slow, and it was we were all, you know, watching his little chest. He was so, so small at the end, like maybe 100 pounds. We were watching his little chest kind of go up and down and, you know, waiting like, oh, God, is this, you know, when it doesn't come back up, oh, is it now? And you know, we were all just trying to, you know, be there and enjoy um, what we had with him. And then <laughs> his mom and I, who were, you know, kind of facing each other because I was in the bed and she was on the floor um, by his head. She, we were looking at each other and talking to him. And all of a sudden, we hear mom, the word mom from behind him. And so Annie, his mom, Annie and I look behind him 
there's no one there. And we look under the door. There's a crack under the door big enough for, like, a kitten to crawl under. So we looked under the door to see if there were any feet. The whole family, other than us four, was seven. Everyone else was outside. No one was allowed in the house. So I didn't think there was anyone, but we looked under the door. Nothing there. But it was my Devin's sweet voice, his normal, his healthy voice that we hadn't heard in so long. And then when Annie and I looked back at Devin, Annie said, what, did he just say mom? And I said, yeah, he did. And we looked at him, and he had stopped breathing. So in that moment, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> like, it's real. It's all real. That was that was my dad, and that was his healthy voice. Um, and I think that that was my Devin's gift to me and his mom, because I think our biggest fear was, are we never going to see him again? Um, I know that was my biggest fear. So... So yeah, that was that's a really special um, kind of. I know that was kind of long, but I felt like you needed to know that part before yeah, the other part. But he makes me feel like he's really brought signs to everybody that was in that room. What are the signs that you've received? So, what, like on a regular basis, I this is silly, but Devin used to take his like pop tab on a can of pop, and he used to break it off and put it in the pop and then drink the pop with the pop tab in the pop. And I never understood it. I was like, why are you doing that? You're going to swallow that pop tab and get sick. You're going to hurt yourself. And I used to yell at him over it, like, why are you doing that? And um, one day, I was, this was just a couple weeks ago, I was coming home from class. I signed up for a religions course. And the first day of class, they were really testing me, saying that, you know, all these things like God isn't real. And they were really testing and I was devastated when I left that class, and I was crying on the way home, and I said, Dev, you have got to give me a sign that you're here. You have got to give me a sign, and I don't drink pop. And when I walked inside my house, there was a pop tab on my floor, and I live alone. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so that was crazy, because I had just been thinking the other day, like, just before that, I was just remembering Devin doing that with the pop, and then I walked in, and I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's incredible. <laughs> I love that. So what about um, when you had emailed in, you had emailed in a couple other stories, though, too, right? Yeah. Because, yeah, so share that. So, okay, this one's long. I'm going to try to tell it cohesively. Um, that's so, okay. Thanks. <laughs> so this is the, this is my most special sign that I've ever gotten from my dad. Um, whew, so, uh a few days before, maybe a week, I don't remember, a little bit before Debbie passed, I was at his house, and we were all, me and his mom and his brother, we were all in there talking to him, and at this point, he could he could still talk with us, and I brought him in, like, this last-ditch effort to save him. I brought over a bunch of healing crystals. I brought over just every crystal that I had that I thought would do him some good, and I brought over a lot of rose quartz and I like set it everything up by his bed and I put them on his chest and I was just I was trying to help him any way I could and um, I had said he couldn't open his eyes so I said Deb this is rose quartz I'm putting rose quartz here in your chest and he said rose quartz I got you something that was rose quartz why don't you never wear it and he was talking about for my 17th birthday he got me a necklace that was a heart it's a pink heart it's rose quartz and it's beautiful, but um, the chain had broken on it. So, sorry, that's loud. I'm outside. But the chain had broken on it, so I told him. I said, oh, Dad, I'm so sorry. Like, I wear it. I swear I have it. I just, the chain's broken, so I don't wear it on my neck, but I have it. And so when I went home, I uh, I looked for it, and I got it, and I put it in my, the next day, I put it in my pant pocket, my shorts pocket, Oh, my God, Julie, there's a feather floating down from the sky, like, right now. Right now? Yeah, I'm outside. I, I caught a mouse in a human trap this morning, and I just released it. So I'm outside, and a feather literally just fell right in front of my face. <laughs> wow. Oh, I love that. <laughs> okay, sorry. That was He's so with cool. you. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Okay, but um, so where was I? Oh, yeah, so I, I put the stone in my in my short pocket, so that I could show him the next time, the that day, the next day when I went to see him, that I still had it. And then 
things were so crazy. It was like every time I went there, things were worse, he was weaker, and I think I just forgot to show him and or to, you know, to tell him I had it. And then days went by. I forgot about it entirely. It, you know, took the shorts off. Couldn't tell you what shorts they were. And then I guess a few days later, um, Devin passed. And the day after he passed, I was in bed and my mom came in. That night I went home and, you know, went in my bed and that was it. And uh, the next morning my mom came into my room and said, Devin, 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 there's a sign for you outside from Devin Brooks. And I said, no, there's not. I said, no, there's not. She said, yes, there is. There's a morning dove outside on the back porch for you. It's from Devin. And I said, Mom, Devin would not send me a sign to you. And she said, he did, he did. And I said, no, he didn't. And I got up and uh, changed out of the clothes I had worn the day before. And I went out front, not out back. Um, I didn't really want to, you know, see anybody out back. Um, but it was my dad's birthday, <laughs> so his 50th birthday, so I had to get up. So I went out front, and I sat on the porch, and um, I was just sitting there, you know, kind of in like a like a trance, I would say, just kind of like thinking about just everything and nothing and just looking at nothing. And um, out of nowhere, this little gray bird, it's also really important to know that my Devin is the biggest animal lover ever, like, loves animals. We could go to the zoo, and you don't have to read the plaques. You don't have to talk to anybody. He can just tell you every fact about every animal that ever was. So I see this little gray bird, like, just fly out of nowhere and land in front of me. And my heart kind of, like, you know, skipped a beat, and I thought, is that a dove? Is that a dove? Like, was my mom right? Is that a dove for me? And um, then I said to Dev, and I said, Dev, you know I don't know what a dove looks like. <laughs> And then, right after that, out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere, flies in this black bird with a red chest. And that is the only bird that I know because Devin taught me what that bird is. Of course, I don't know the name, but I know what the bird looks like. And it comes around where we live in the beginning of spring, and it means new beginnings. And it flew down. I think it's like a, like a red-chested, black-winged something. And it flew down, and I knew, like, oh, that, that's my Devin. So yeah. it was like I told him I didn't know what the first bird was, so he sent me one I did know. And I I walked out toward it. We have kind of like a we have a circle driveway, and it's kind of big. So I walked out there, like, onto the gravel and was trying to walk toward it. And then I was alone, and then out of nowhere, my dad walks from the backyard up, and he says, what are you looking at? And then there was nothing there. Um, wow. So I, really crazy, right? So I went inside, and I just fell apart, and I called my best friend who lives in Chicago, and I hadn't seen her in a while, and I said, Cass, like, I've got to talk, and we talked, and she started to make me feel a little bit better. Oh, this is important. Sorry, I forgot this part. So that morning when um, I got up and got dressed, I went to my closet, and I had noticed on the ground in my closet this book bag from one of my friends from my birthday earlier that month. And the book bag was just sitting on the floor. Um, so I'd already seen that. So anyway, when I went back inside and called my friend, we were talking. And uh, I don't know why I did this because I didn't need anything from the closet. I had already changed my clothes. But I walked back over to my closet. I had started smiling. And we were joking about how Devin always said that, like, he wanted to name one of our kids, like, give him the middle name Destroyer. So I was like, we were talking about that, and I said, okay, yeah, like, <laughs> I said, uh, like, Willie Mae, destroy your Burke, and we were joking about it. And um, so I had started laughing, and then when I walked to the closet, I opened the door, and on the book bag that I had already seen that morning was that heart stone that I had wanted to show Devin that I still had, that I was worried that um, that he didn't think that I had it anymore but I had forgot to show him, and, you know, I didn't know where it went. I totally didn't even know what shorts I was wearing, so that stone yes. was sitting on the book bag that I had already seen that morning, and nothing was there. So that's, wow. that's my favorite, favorite sign. It's kind of a lot of little signs in one. Yeah, yeah. So how long were you two together? 
Um, we started dating when we were 12. Okay. And wow, we're 21 now. We did, we broke up for like a year, but you know, it wasn't really break up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I've got a question for you. What's with, because yeah. when he, his energy comes forward, I really feel like he's got white and yellow daisies. What does that signify to you? Daisies? Well, that's my favorite flower. Wow. <laughs> yeah. The other thing is, as you were talking, what he was really showing me is that you were one of his angels here on earth that was able to be strong enough to be there for him through his journey here. And he says he needs you to know that he will be one of your angels for the rest of your life here. He makes me feel like in your heart chakra that there's a lot of still emotional pain. And it's also tied to you. He shows me having a family, a partner, kids in the future and being scared to allow that to come into your life in the future because of the pain and the magnitude of his loss. And he yeah. says, I need you to know that not only are you supposed to have that partner and not only am I going to make sure that you connect with the right person here, but he said you're supposed to be a parent. And what he shows me is that sometimes the pain of what you went through with him gets tied to you thinking about your future and thinking about those things coming into your life because it's almost like your egoic mind comes in and says, well, what if I lose them? What if something yeah. happens to one of them? And he says, I need you to release that from your heart because he said to go through this once in your life is enough. And he says, I need you to see yourself having a family life that's healthy, right? Everybody's healthy from start to finish. And he said, there's so many blessings that are coming to you, but just emotionally within his, within your heart, he just says, it's okay to release the pain. It's okay to release the fear because you're not going to be releasing his energy. Does that all make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I think my uh my biggest fear is that like like I like Devin's my soulmate and I think my fear is that like I were I find myself worrying all the time, like, what if he's not my soulmate? Like what am I gonna do? Like why would my soulmate leave the earth without me? That doesn't make sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that makes sense. I don't know that all people are ready to hear this yet, but I'm going to say it and just hope that the energy sinks in and can resonate with everybody who's listening as much as possible. If everything is all that is, right? If everything is the same vibration, God vibration. And let's yeah. say um, what they show me is think of everything is God, right? God is all that is. But here on earth, what makes things physical are the vibrations that are wrapped on top of God vibration. So you're layering vibration upon vibration upon vibration, but when you chisel it down to one piece, it's ultimately God, right? Yeah. So when you get into spirituality and when you come into spiritual awakening, one thing that you can do, you can do this in meditation or you can just do this sitting quietly, is you can really feel the presence and the oneness between all things. That if I quiet and still and go into meditation, I can become the tree in front of my house. I can become my house. I can become the earth. I can become all of the people here on earth. You can really feel the oneness that everything is truly one. And that is the highest vibration that is where everything is one all together because remember um i don't know if you've ever heard in the podcast where i say if god is the entire ocean we're just one droplet of the ocean right uh -huh. and here yeah, on earth, i actually stole like, that and i oh sorry sorry oh no go ahead no i was gonna say I, I stole that like analogy from the podcast and used it in a discussion in my religions course <laughs> oh that's awesome that's awesome yes feel away because 
<laughs> perfect. So if in the in this world on earth it feels like we're the one droplet, right? But spiritual yes. awakening is coming back into realizing and knowing and feeling that we are truly the ocean. We're the oneness of all things. Well, if everything is truly that ocean, it's all one, then really all people here are the same person. And you can break that down another way where you could say me is the individual droplet. Every love that we have here on earth stems from the same soul. So even though it's hard to explain that, even though, you know, you probably tell most men that and they'd be like, no, <laughs> you, know, like, you can't even go there. Um, it's not like you're going to go to your future husband and be like, you're the same person. <laughs> they're yeah. not. You know, they're individual droplets, but the essence of who they are is the same. Does that make sense? It does. I mean, you know, as much as it can. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so I know it's different here that we have those individual identities, but I do find that with a lot of clients, it helps to know that that soul is always with you. Yeah, yeah, it does. And I don't know if I should put that part in the podcast or not, because I don't know if people are ready to hear it. (laughs) It's definitely like a, it's definitely um, a concept. It's definitely hard to wrap your head around. Um, Yeah. But I mean, you know, there's nothing... I don't know, like, yeah, kind of just is what it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, and I guess the other way that you can look at it is that the soul is omnipresent, and I think it's very possible that even though our consciousness is just confined to this one body, that our soul's consciousness can be in more bodies at the same time. Yeah, um, I you've talked about it on your podcast before once, but... Um, when when my Devin passed, um, I I didn't know like what to do, so I just ordered a bunch of books on Amazon, and uh, a shaman that I had come in touch with to try and help Devin when he was still here um, recommended Journey of Souls by Michael Newton. Yeah. Um, and he he talks about that, or I guess the the souls who um, connected with themselves on the other side talk about that um, in the book about that concept. Oh, okay. That's awesome. That's awesome. I'll have to go back and reread that part. Yeah, so it's kind of, that's that's like where most of my understanding of that comes from is yeah. the book that I've read. <laughs> no, I love that book, Journey of Souls, and I love the work that he did because it's incredible to to read it and to pair it up with I, what I see, and it is yeah. just so spot on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, I'm so sorry for your loss, um, but I'm so glad that Devin's made himself known to you, that you feel his presence with you, and just know that you will always continue to feel that in your life. Thank you. Thank you so much, and thank you for letting me share my stories of him coming to me. I I just met someone recently who lost their best friend to suicide, and uh, I was talking to him and told him that I had been begging my Devin for a visitation dream, um, and I didn't get one, but my sister did. And I was saying how I was so happy for her, but I was so jealous. <laughs> um, and I was telling him about that, and he started crying, and he said, wait, like, when you have a dream like that and it feels real, it's it's them? And I said, yeah. And he told me about a dream that he had had of his best friend, where his best friend said, hey, buddy, I'm having a great time here. And he said that he woke up and it felt so real that he didn't understand that it was a dream. I told him that was a visitation dream and he just like broke down. So I think it's so special to be able to give someone else that kind of like clarification, um, that kind of like validation that like their sign is, is real too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely, because those visitation dreams are real. And actually what I've been finding myself telling people Spirit's been communicating this a lot in my sessions is that a lot of times in a visitation dream, 
it can be confusing because you feel like you've gotten this message. You feel like you've heard mm-hmm. them say something. But a lot of my clients will say, but their mouth didn't move. And what we have yes, to understand yes, is that, time. yes. So on the other side, there's telepathy. I can't hurt you. You can't hurt me on the other side because you could feel my emotions. You can know my thoughts. And to hurt me would automatically hurt you in the exact same way. So Uh in a visitation dream, a lot of times we do feel like we're hearing a voice or we're, we're getting, knowing, feeling the message. When we wake up, that message is carried through. We know what it was but we didn't ever see their mouth move. And so my clients will come in and they'll be like, how can that be? How did their mouth not move? But I like heard them. And I said, it's because they communicate differently on the other side. There is no need for that spoken language. Yeah, that's so interesting too. Um, But yeah, I definitely, I have since, um, since my sister got a dream from Devin, I have got a couple dreams. They weren't what I wanted. I wanted him to come to me and hug me and say, like, um, you know, won't be long. I'll see you soon. I miss you. But it wasn't like that. Um, but I guess we don't get to choose <laughs> what we need. Um, but I have gotten dreams from him. And uh, he, you know, told me he was okay and that uh, uh, he wasn't in pain anymore. He was walking, which he couldn't walk. And he was laughing. And uh but then I woke up, and but the whole time it was like he was telling me things, but he never really spoke. So, yeah. Yeah. Also know that I really feel the presence of Archangel Michael working with you as well. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's definitely working with you, helping to clear out all of this emotional pain. Um, but, Devin, are you in school still, in college? Yes. Yeah, I'm okay. a senior in college. What are you studying? I'm studying Spanish and strategic communications, which is kind of like PR and marketing and advertising, that kind of thing. Oh, okay. And how do you want to use it? Um, I really don't know. Um, I know I, it sounds cliche, but I know I really want to help people. I, I can't imagine like living a life where I'm not doing things for other people, um, and bettering their lives. Um, I feel like that would, you know, that's, I feel like I have to be here to help people. Um, so I really don't know yet. I'm kind of just thinking maybe it'll just show up. <laughs> that's amazing. He just really comes in very clear that everything is going to work out. I feel like also within that heart chakra, it's kind of this anxiety about your first job and, you know, is yeah. everything going to fall into place? And his message is very clearly yes. He's going to make sure that you're taken care of, that everything does fall into place for you. That's good to hear. (laughs) Yeah, I do. I have a lot of, like, you know, all my friends have had internships, and they've done all these things, and I never did anything. I don't know why. I think the whole time Devin was sick, I just, that's all I focused on, and I just never did any of the other things that, you know, joined the clubs or anything that my friends did. So I have, you know, look. I look at their resumes, and I'm like, oh, my resume doesn't look like that. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. You know what's so funny is before you said internship, Devin said you could do a Devin uh, an internship for me if you ever wanted to do that. Yeah, for public relations (laughs) of kind of sending out press releases and stuff. You know what's so crazy, Julie? Literally, you had said on a podcast episode a little while ago. I think it was when you were talking with Pat Longo, and she was saying that she got an assistant, and you were like, I need an assistant. And um, I was like, I should email her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, because he's showing me that very clearly. Um, so I did just hire an assistant, but it would be great to have somebody, like if you wanted to intern and send out press releases and stuff, I could definitely still use the help. Oh, my gosh. This is a dream come true. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> and then you have something to add on your resume. Awesome. I need it. <laughs> That's awesome. Yay. I love how spirit works. Um, yeah, me well, too. Devin, thank you so, so much for being on the show today. I'm so sorry for everything that you've been through, but I do feel very deeply from what they're showing me that you were called to be his angel here, and he just thanks you so much because he says he wouldn't have been able to go through this journey without you. 
sounds like him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. Okay, friends, turn down the volume because it's going to get loud here again. I'm still trying to figure out this editing equipment so that it doesn't go from loud to quiet to loud to quiet, but I don't have it all figured out just yet. Friends, I don't ask you to support this podcast with a membership program or with Patreon. What I ask is that if this podcast resonates with you, if having an angel reading is something that you feel called to do, please go online and book an appointment with me. I offer 25 and 55 minute angel message readings. I also offer Reiki energy healing sessions. If that is something that you feel called to do with me, that's actually how I keep this podcast going, is you booking those sessions. So thank you so, so much for continuing to do that. You can book your reading or your energy healing session on my website, www.jancis.com. That's my last name, dot com. I've also got the Angel School coming back up in November. If the Angel School is something that you've been interested in doing and learning how to bring through messages from loved ones and angels on the other side and learning Reiki energy healing simultaneously at the same time, we do have the November Angel School on November 16th and 17th. That's a Saturday and Sunday. It'll be held at the Hilton Doubletree Hotel in Lyle, Illinois. That's right on the border of Lyle and Naperville, Illinois. And thank you so much for your support of the Angel School. It has gotten such a great response from you that we're actually looking at adding an in-person date in January. There are some people who live very far away in New Zealand, Australia, who would like to take the class remotely because it's just easier for them than flying in. There are other people who really don't mind and they want to fly in. It really is just dependent on the individual and I respect whatever method you want to take. But in January, we definitely have an online version of the Angel School, and we're thinking about adding an in-person class as well. So if you want to take part in one of those, please let me know so that I can get you registered and on the list to save your spot. Friends, if you could be an angel, please write a five-star review or just click five stars on this podcast, subscribe to this podcast, Um, But when you do review us, you leave a positive five-star review, we enter you into a monthly drawing to win a free session with me. We're also going to be giving away 15 more free sessions in November, and we're planning a couple more cool things, but I can't tell you about it yet. It's top secret. It's all offered to those who are in the drawing. So You get entered into the drawing for every time you write a review. You can write one on iTunes, on Google. When you look up my name, Julie Jancis, you can also write one on our Facebook page. You can also be an angel by sharing this podcast with your friends and family. Just spreading the word helps so much. Friends, if you want a daily angel message, make sure that you're following us over on Instagram, Facebook, or our Facebook group. You can find us over there by typing in at angel podcast. That's the at sign angel podcast. The group name is Angels and Awakening Podcast Tribe. Over on the group, we post a weekly Facebook video. That is something that is not here on the podcast. It's different content. It's kind of more what's happening in my life as it relates to spirituality and the podcast. Friends, last but not least, if you have an angel story that you'd like to share, we would love to hear it. We are looking for your angel stories for you to either come on the podcast and share your story yourself or for you to write us your story. If you don't want to read it, we would be happy to read it for you right here on the show. My friends, thank you so, so much for being here today. I want you to take a moment to just open up your heart. I want you to feel that energy surrounding your heart chakra. I want you to feel it opening and getting lighter. You could even see it as French doors 
opening within your heart and you allowing love, peace, bliss, ease, grace, all to flow in to your being. I want you to know, my friends, that every single one of you has angels, guides, and loved ones on the other side who are cheering for you, who are rooting for you, who want nothing more than for you to be loved, for you to succeed, and for you to see your dreams come true here on earth. Are you talking to them? Are you spending time with them? Are you making time within your life to be still, to be quiet, and to listen to what your angels, guides, and loved ones are telling you? They're talking to you all the time. They just talk to us differently. It might not sound like their voice. It sounds like your own internal dialogue. It is your intuition. Your intuition is the tool that they use to communicate with you. So take some time to be silent, to be still, and to listen to the messages that they're trying to bring through to you right now. It's never negative. It's always positive. That's how you know it's them. And don't forget to ask them for help. The more that we ask our spirit team for help, the more that they can do for us. So get up in the morning and ask them to help you throughout your day. You can say that little prayer while you're getting ready for work, while you're getting ready for school. You just incorporate it into your daily routine. My friends, that is how you open up your heart to all of the unexpected blessings that your team is trying to bring into your life right now. Watch out for the signs because they're also bringing you those. Friends, I love you so much. They love you so much. Thank you for sharing your time with me today. I feel so blessed to have you in my life. And I feel so blessed to be a tool that God can work through. Because believe me, friends, none of this is me. It is all spirit. I love you so much. They love you. Have a beautiful, wonderful, fantastic, incredible week. Make it a great week. Until next time, sending you peace, bliss, and many, many blessings.